we're used to dark bars. We're used to dark, like a theater. I'm like, oh, it's a theater. It's a small theater, but it's good. It gets me out of my element, and that's what's important. Because I love, let's be honest, I love drinking. You guys like drinking at all? Drinking man? No. Oh my God, ruined my life. <laughs> I miss my kids. Is it that bad? <laughs> like, I miss my weekends, but people tell me about them all the time. They sound like <laughs> I love oh, hitting so much. I have this cool, uh, it's called, it's called the drinking problem. Uh, it's called work in the morning. Ah, fuck it. It's literally corny, <laughs> fun joke to do. The real drinking problem, though, is cirrhosis, right? Yeah. Sorry, we aren't all doctors here, apparently. Medical terminology, just nothing. So how many dark bars rule, because in your faces, I want to see the disappointment in yours. You're just dead eyes. No, I love drinking so much that uh, yeah, I gotta watch myself though, because like the, the first thing drinking affects is your judgment, right? That's the first thing is a go-to. They tell you about the DMV even in that little book. But like, you gotta be careful with your judgment when you're out drinking, because like, here's a little little fable, little story, little thing that may have happened. It happened at one point. Out, out on a nice night. Out having a wonderful time, wonderful date with a girl I just met. So we're, we're hitting it all. We're having wholesome fun, though. We start the night off wholesome fun. What do you want to do? Let's get chicken wings. How wholesome is that? Chicken wings is like the most wholesome fun. So you guys are having that forlorn fun, and you're hitting it off, and everything's going well, and you're having a few drinks, kicking them back. Night's taking a sexy turn, <laughs> sexy exotic turn. For both of you, your eyes meet, and then you just kind of sloppily make out until you get back to your house. And, you know, when the night transitions like that, you got to remember a couple of things. And one thing that you may have forgot is to wash your fucking hands, you animal. Because <laughs> you may or may not have just set her vagina on fire. So, <laughs> instead of like a nice sexy night, and you're just like, Petting her head like she's looking at the rabbits, and you're about to knock her out. She's like sitting in a bathtub. She's like, I'm cold. I'm like, eh. I really like to tank that joke. That joke was great to tank. I'm really judging like the levels here. I'm just throwing out like the easy ones and kind of messing with them. And you guys are gonna be good. You're gonna be a problem. You're cool. Uh, dead eyes just perked up, so that's awesome. I can't beat that. You know, once you have dead eyes in a theater, I think you made it. Like I'm pretty feeling really full of myself right now. Uh, I dated this Filipino girl once, and uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, I don't know if you know about their culture, but before you can date a Filipino girl, you have to stick fight her dad, <laughs> and he'll beat the shit out of you because he should. He has 55 years more stick fighting experience than any white person ever. But, uh, no, she was cool, though. She was awesome. She was very, uh, funny and, and sexy and exotic and, like, really tan. Like, I always thought it was cool. Like, she was so tan. Like, every time we took a photo together, it looked like I was haunting her. <laughs> it was just, like, a bunch of Facebook profile pictures of her, like, smiling, standing next to a bunch of orbs. <laughs> that was fun. We had to, we dated for a while, we had to keep things fresh. You gotta keep things interesting bedroom especially, mix it up, you know, bring in a midget every once in a while, nobody has a bad time when there's midgets, right? <laughs> but even those get boring, so you gotta switch it up some more and try things like role playing. Like we tried role playing, but we were both such spontaneous people that it just kind of had to happen, right? So like one morning she walks in the bedroom wearing just a towel on her head, so I tackled her, and we played Homeland Security. I gave her the full Osama Bin Laden treatment, shot in the face and chest, <laughs> drew her a bath for the burial at sea. I released doves because I'm a gentleman, and that's what we do. Gentlemen and prince, that's what we do. <laughs> and then I wanted to celebrate my own way by like watching like Zero Dark Thirty or a movie like that, you know? And uh, the problem with that movie is that's three hours long. And first of all, she's gonna prune up in the tub sitting there watching that. But also, not to be modest, we did not have three hours of sex. So totally not time appropriate. I 
wanted to find something more time appropriate. So I just went on YouTube and watched the trailer. <laughs> I didn't mind. I was satisfied. She was <laughs> cool. Uh, all her friends, though, all her, all her guy friends, just gay guys. Just completely, exclusively just gay guys. But not like the gay friends that I have where they just, they just look like a dude and like, you have to quiz them for a while. You found out that they were like, they were gay. What are your hobbies? What are your interests? What do you like to do? Oh, you know, I like sports, and music, and sometimes I fuck guys. <laughs> cool. It's a cool story. But her, her gay friends were like so flamboyant. And extra they were like cartoon characters, not putting them down. They're still cool guys. But they would wear like shit like rainbow colored vests and like capes to barbecues. And they roll their skinny jeans up past the knee. I don't know how that's a thing. Like, you have to be really good at, like, gritting your teeth through pain <laughs> to, to acquire that skill. But if we'd be out at bars, and uh, we'd be out, like, at a club or whatever, and she'd be dancing with us, come back and talk, and it, they would do things that would bother me, but it's just because they bother me, not because they're gay. They're just standing around, how oh my God, I love your suits, bitch. He's still a guy hitting my girlfriend and calling her a bitch. And I can't punch him, because that's that hate crime. <laughs> so, really rock and hard place. Maybe the worst analogy ever for this scenario. <laughs> but one night I was like, I just, I can't do this anymore. Why, why do you let him do that? What do you mean? Why does he just get to, all night, I gotta stand here and just watch him just get away with stuff that I just wanna do once. I thought a while, but I knew I knew my surroundings. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but she was like, she made a really good point. She's like, um, if you want to start taking loads in the face, we can have this this negotiation. Till then, just let the gay guys hit me. I don't know. I flubbed it. I saw him just go, uh, look at his beer. I love it. 